Tuesday. Do you guys remember that we did kind of like all of that? Like we took the Friday about moving from the hips and we used that movement of like hinging from the hips to load the hamstrings. Do you guys remember all this work, like picking up that foot and loading the hamstring? So then that got me, you know, it, it's so funny how I actually never really have a plan. It just kind of starts to like unfold in the body. So as I started doing more stuff, strengthening the back of the body, then maybe you saw on Instagram that I tried this like pushing off the wall and like rolling over my forearms. Yeah, that was so cool. Mm -hmm. that, that, that five second video took like an hour to make because that is so much harder than it looks. I did not have like the upper body strength in my upper back to like, or at least the coordination of it to like roll up and over my elbows. So then that got me thinking, okay, the backs of my legs are pretty strong, but I can use a little bit more strength in the, in the upper back area here. So that's a little bit where um, kind of how class grew out of. So we've got that anatomical focus. And then the second part of it is um, I've had three students tell me now in the last week that they're having more anxiety Right, they're just kind of like having some having some issues, some stuff going on. And we've been using this tool of saying, okay, what would like a calm person do? Okay. My this person I follow, like Mel Robbins, you know, she's always talking about like what would a confident person do? So like if you don't have the confidence to do something, think about someone that you know that does have a lot of confidence and make decisions like they would make decisions. And, and kind of then before you know it, you would like turn into a confident person because you're doing all the steps about what it takes. You're out there, you're making connections, you're networking, you're starting your stuff, right? So today as we practice, like what does it take to be a calm person? And anyone that you know that is calm, how would they act, right? How would they move? And really using this idea of physicalizing, right? So what does calm actually look like in a pose? Hi, everybody. Nice full class here. Hey, get him down. Hey, Claire, two blocks. If you don't have a block, you're going to get something like a pillow, like a blanket. And as you come to lie down, you're going to take those blocks and press your, right, let's just actually like make it easier. Just clamp them behind the backs of your shins. Also, my knees are poked over my hips. I'm holding the block only by pressing my calf muscle down on the block and squeezing it in against the hamstring. Okay. So what this is gonna do for everybody, especially if you've got some uh, nice heavy pork blocks, <laughs> is by just holding and gripping there, your hamstrings, the muscles on, obviously the backs of your upper legs have to be working a little bit. They're in a slight contraction. So just knowing that, right, that that's what we're trying to do. Can you increase that a little? So I'm actually going to squeeze the block a little bit more strongly, knowing that I just, I'm even going to reach and feel you guys. And I feel that my, my hamstrings have a little bit of like tension or tone to them. And then extend your arms out to the side, palms turned open. So the upper body can be very soft and relaxed while the legs are starting to work here. So depending on how tightly you're clamping in, right? My, my right legs are already starting to shake a little bit. And then whatever that quality is that you'd like more of in your life, like confidence or calmness, 
kind of, if there's something really specific, you could put that as your intention for today and imagine practicing like someone full and embodied of that quality. But that characteristic comes very, very easily to you. Inhale. And exhale, and definitely on the exhale, I'm squeezing the block a little bit more firmly. Again, inhale. Exhale, knees are parked right over the hips. It's pretty tempting to pull them in tighter, but then your low back flattens. We wanna make sure we keep the arch of our low back. One more, you guys, please, inhale. Exhale. And then letting your eyes open from there, please begin to draw big circles with your knees here. So don't maybe worry too much about like the intensity of it at first. I'd like for you to just start to get a little rhythm. Rolling from hip to hip here. And then the more you push your knees and your toes forward towards the top of your mat, you should feel your lower abdominals start to engage to kind of control. And definitely the slower you go, the more you're gonna feel maybe the muscles of the outer hips fire up as you try to control the movement and not just move from momentum. Great, and let's go for five. Should kind of feel good, you guys. Nice lubricating mobility exercise. Four, three, two, just kind of let it rock you into just a very nice, calm space. And then as you come through center, hold on to your knees, draw your knees deeply in towards your chest. And then I remove the left block as I drop my knees over to the right. And as my knees drop over to the right, twist through your stomach, twist through the ribs, reach out through the arms, and maybe apply a little bit of last week's theme, pulling the breath in, pull, 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 that slight tug of the breath all the way up around the heart, and exhale. Good, bring that back to center. Replant that left block and arms out to the side. And then if you can remember you guys which direction you did, please just balance it out going in the opposite direction. And so out and around. And now this time you kind of know what you're doing. So can you use this as a practice to warm up your core here? Use your core muscles to pull the knees in and to push the knees forward. Nice big circles. And you're going to go for five. How's your breath? Four. Three. Two. One. Settling back into center. Full squeeze of the knees in towards your chest. And then remove probably that right block. Drop left, right knee on top of left knee as you twist the knees to the left and open the torso to the right. Pull the breath long up through the spine. And I do kind of like this word tug because you kind of feel like the lift of the pelvic floor, the lift of the diaphragm, the lift of the upper palate as you reach the crown of your head. And then please come back to center. Okay, one more, you guys. So you're clamping onto the blocks. Take your hands onto your knees and just use your own hands to kind of pull the knees out and around in opposite directions. Good, and that should also feel good for the sacrum and low back. For three, two, one. Nice, really step both feet into the mat. Knees are bent. As you extend your left leg up towards the ceiling, flex the foot, interlace the fingers behind the back of your knee, behind the back of the calf, maybe drawing up towards the ankle and heel, and then extend the right leg all the way forward. 
Okay. So after doing those little like hamstring clamps, kind of letting your hamstring be in contraction. Now take an extra breath or two, letting the hamstring be in extension. Left hip is plugged down as you push out through that left heel. Excellent, bend both knees, step the feet into the mat and change sides. Right leg extends up, flex the foot, interlace the fingers behind the back of your right knee. I draw that awareness up the calf, maybe it stops there. Ankle potentially reaching towards the heel if that's an option. And then extend your left leg all the way forward. So we've got this whole back body awareness today, opening up that posterior chain. Inhale. And exhale. Good, bend both knees, draw your knees into your chest and rock up to seated. Okay, now those of you with blocks, take your blocks face down so that they're flat. If you don't have blocks, see them, you can try this just with your arms on the mat. Okay, so you put your blocks face down on either side of the mat and then you lie down back in between the blocks so that the block supports the head of your shoulder down to your elbows. So the block is actually supporting your upper arm bones. Bend your elbows, point your fingertips up towards the ceiling like those robot arms. Okay, good. And I'm gonna bend my knees, see them and step the feet into them. And I think it's just a little easier. Now, from the tailbone to the crown of the head, try not to bend the spine, Push down into your upper arm bones and lift your head, your upper back and your chest up off the floor. So it's like a reverse chaturanga in a way. Yeah, good, kind of chin to chest. So almost like you could think of it kind of like a push up going in the opposite direction and then lower down. Inhale and exhale, press up. Good, feel the muscles on the back body begin to engage. And then if you'd like more, you guys, extend your legs all the way, flex your feet, lift your head, and then lift your upper back and lift your hips and hold there, right? And if you were to flip your hands, it would be the exact same shape as a chaturanga strengthening the backs of the shoulders, the upper back, the low back and hips. As you release, nice job, you guys. So a little bit more awareness into your upper back there. Draw your knees into your chest. Rock forward, plant your palms. Downward facing dog. So yeah, backs of my shoulders, upper back. It's not something like maybe in cobras and our shalabhasanas, we get into them there. Inhale. Exhale, lower your knees down to the mat, table top. Left arm extends up, reach, gaze follows fingertips. And then a very simple thread the needle. Left hand, let it guide behind the right. And then remember you guys, we've been doing this little added step where you extend your right leg straight back. Toes tuck under, and by lifting that back knee, you may be able to spiral yourself in slightly deeper. Use the right hand actively into the floor to unwind your upper back. Inhale, exhale, push and come back to center, tabletop position. Okay, we got Maria coming in. And second side, inhale, right arm lifts. Good, thread that back behind the wrist, slide all the way, good, lower onto that right ear, right shoulder, reposition left hand. And then please extend, left leg all the way back, toes are tucked under. And by releasing that leg, you should have a little bit more space to twist in more deeply. Unwind your spine. Inhale and exhale, arms active into the floor. Nice job, you guys. Come back to center and as you plant your hands, 
Inhale here. Exhale, push hips up and back, downward facing dog. Right. So maybe notice that as soon as we start to get a little bit more complex in our movements and all of that, maybe you forget your intention. Remembering to move like someone who's confident in their movements or calm. Inhale. Exhale. Step forward to the top of your mat. Inhale to lengthen here, half flat back. Exhale, fold in. Okay. Hands to hips, elbows up, flat back. And so a lot of you right, have been kind of in this like series of me really trying to remind you that the movement of the spine should really start from the movement of your hips as you lift to stand. Step your feet nice and wide, mat width distance apart. Inhale, full stretch, arms up. Exhale as you pull your thumbs down towards your chest. Please lower slow into Malasana. Use your elbows to press your knees open. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, top of your push-up, plank pose. So now remember those muscles that were working in that little drill. The triceps, the upper back, the back of the deltoids, push the floor, and then targeting those muscles, lower slow to chaturanga. Put your knees down, put your hips down, point toes and see if you can land using those muscles to snuggle the shoulder blades onto your upper back. We want upper back strength today. Press back, downward facing dog. One. Inhale. Exhale for two, arms up overhead. Remember, we've got this kind of push, pull action with the breath. Look forward, your choice, step or jump, top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen, nice blare, good. Extend the spine out of the pot of the pelvis. Rotate the hips more, drop in, fold, Uttanasana. Be clear, be specific, hands to hips, elbows up, flat back, and you move your pelvis first as you lift to rise, step out wide, inhale, reach, look up, exhale, widen the knees, use your glutes as you lower, slow, malasana, elbows press the inner knees open as you lift your heart, gazes up, inhale, Exhale, plant palms, be specific, step into a nice strong line of plank pose. Now remember, I've been saying this lately, whenever we're resisting gravity in plank, you do want a little tuck of your tailbone, good, to support your low back. And now chaturanga, make that very specific. Think of the muscles that you were working, knees down, hips down, point toes, cobra. Inhale, there's that pulling forward of the lower abdominals. Press back, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. So something since you guys are all so consistent in your practices, like especially with me, is like you can really, I think over the past couple of weeks start to layer on what we've been working. I remember like three or four weeks ago, it was like internal spiral in the legs. And that kind of let me into the rotation of the hips. And then the rotation of the hips, right, into that strong anterior tilt has kind of led me into being more focused on the back body, because that's when we use our upper back muscles. Look forward, your choice, step or jump. So it's really kind of progressive. Inhale, lengthen, half flat back, pull the outer hips back. Exhale, now make sure you're not just moving your spine, you're really moving your hips as you fold, Uttanasana. Hands to hips, elbows up. Inner borders of your shoulder blades come in towards your spine. Push to rise. Step, step. Nice and wide. Last one, you guys. Inhale, reach. Strong, you dry breath. Exhale. That'll really heat your practice here. Okay, so we got the, we did those drills at the beginning of class. A little hip mobility as you widen the knees out. Plant the palms. Heels press back as the heart pulls forward. Plank pose. Inhale, plank. And then really try not to rush through chaturanga. Let chaturanga be that pose. Knees down, hips down, point toes. Inhale from the inner thighs up through the mid spine. Lift up. Wow. Good job, you guys. Hips press up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. One. 
Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Look towards your hands. Float forward, top of your sticky mat. There you go, Claire. Nice. Welcome back. Everyone's over their colds. And exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Bend knees, drop hips, sit low, Utkatasana. And remember, we're in Utkatasana. We still want that inner rolling of the upper thighs, the widening of the feet apart as you reach up. And then exhale, fold in Uttanasana. Inhale, look forward, half flat back. So today I'm really just going to step these, you guys. I'm going to step these to plank because I do want to keep the focus on the muscles of the whole back body. Back to the shoulders, back to the triceps, chaturanga. And if you're ready, upward facing dog, you could always stick with the cobras. Feel the muscles on the back body, pulling the heads of the shoulders back. Downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward up in between your hands. Now, are you going to lift up from your low back? Or are you going to lift up from controlling the hips, lifting up through the front rim of the pelvis and coming to rise? Good. Inhale, straighten the front right leg. Arms go back as you hinge halfway, load the hamstring to fold. Bend your front knee, inhale, high lunge. Press the leg to straight. Find the root of that back left toe and then focus on the rotation of the pelvis. Folding out over, looking over the edge of the front of your mat. Bend your knee, one more. Move the hips, move the spine, inhale here. Nice, feet and push into the floor, lifting tall. And then really open heart. Not letting your pelvis collapse on the head of that right femur bone. Instead, really rotating. And then bend the knee. Inhale. High lunge. Movement through the front left rim of the hip. Right? You want to move both sides of the pelvis. Hands to the mat. Plank pose. Think about the hamstrings. Pulling the femur bones up. And then chaturanga. Hold, 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 hold. Inhale, low back, mid back, upper back to lift. Nice, get him done, good. Press back, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward. Don't lift from the low back. Scoop it forward as you lift through the front of the pelvis. High lunge. Straighten, inhale. Up and over, right? So you kind of flow and just pause, right? So maybe if you were focusing today on like confidence, right? Kind of standing big, standing fully here, calm, relaxing the face, bend the knee, inhale. So I find this to be very helpful, at least in my own practice is, right? What does calm look like in this pose, right? Someone watching me practice would almost like feel that. And for me, like calm is usually kind of like slow, a little softer quality of gentleness. Tipping forward, load the hamstring. One more round, inhale up. Nice. Nice, Ali. good. Push down into the feet, pull up and hinge. Look forward, look forward, open heart. You're using your muscles on your back to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Bend your knee, inhale. High lunge, exhale, hands to the mat, pick up the foot. Try not to just kind of like breathe through these, be specific, like a mat, like, so maybe you don't feel strong enough. How would a strong person do these? A really strong person would be able to do them really slowly. So fake it until you make it, go as slow as you can. Inhale, up dog. Hips drive up and back, downward facing dog. So I was kind of wondering like if that would work for poses too, like thinking, okay, there's a pose that I can't do, but if I assume that I could do it, if I just approach my practice, like I've got this, how does that kind of shift the energy behind it? Right, so that's what happened to me with that pose at the wall. Like I decided like, I'm gonna do this. I am a person who can do this. And I just kept 
working at it and looking at like what qualities did it take to make it happen and then I became a person who could do that right but it was kind of like that was the process to make it happen look forward step or jump top of your sticky mat inhale chest pulls long please look forward look forward look forward shift the weight exhale let's stretch out the backs of your legs here fully folding in belly chest chin right the spine follows the direction of your pelvis anteriorly rotating forward bend your knees drop your hips sit down and low utkatasana inhale utkatasana exhale fold utanasana one surya namaskara b full breath full flow inhale open exhale hop step float chaturanga inhale move the breath to move the body exhale hips up and back down dog right foot steps forward back left heel spins the flat lift up inner rotation in that back thigh press into your right heel hands to the mat exhale breath push chaturanga inhale pull lift the heart exhale push hips up and back left foot steps forward right heel spins virabhadrasana one focus on internal spiral in that back leg it should help to free up the pelvis hands to the mat good job you guys lightly pick up that foot without dragging chaturanga do it like somebody who feels really strong and open in their body. Downward facing dog. One. Inhale. Exhale for two. Inhale. Exhale for three. Jump top of your sticky mat. Inhale open, right? So maybe it's just you're pretending like you're someone who can jump easily. It doesn't come easily, but if you keep pretending like it does, maybe someday it will fold and fold, 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 belly, chest, chin. I'm really focusing on the rotation of the pelvis, shins in, thigh bones widening apart, that inner spiral as you bend your knees, drop your hips, utkatasana, to press, to stand, hands to hips, shift the weight into your right foot, left knee draws into your chest. Okay. So we have all different kind of levels of hamstring flexibility, right? Today, we're gonna grab our left big toe from the inside of that left knee to begin to try to straighten the front left leg into Uttita Hasta Parangustasana. But the reason why you guys I'm saying attempt is because maybe the knee stays slightly bent today. Or maybe on this first one, it stays bent. And as we do a couple more of them, it opens. What I want you guys to focus on is that we always kind of get concerned on what's in front of us. But a lot of this pose is actually the way that it's strengthening your right hamstring as you push down through the heel and grow up tall. Now, whether you're holding the toe or the leg is straight, everybody release the toe. Can you float the leg? Yep, so we did that on the floor at the beginning of class. And then without dropping the foot, hinge back. Warrior three, hands reach back alongside your hips. Focus on the back body. This is when I pretend like I'm a minuet, right? Like a puppet with strings attached to me. And there's strings attached to the backs of my shoulders, my kidneys, my left hamstring, my left heel. And it's picking everything up as you come to stand, top of your sticky mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down to your heart. Hands to hips, shift the weight into your left foot. Right knee draws up in towards your chest. So every time we come back to these, you guys, it's gonna be a little less time. This is like your longest hold here. Okay, but I want you to feel the muscles on the back. So you're not leaning into the pose. You're actually pulling everything back. I always imagine I'm at a wall, okay? And then right two fingers, grab your right big toe in a yogic toe lock. That's that standing L. We did a lot of warrior threes last week. Inner thigh spiral down. Okay. Push the weight back into the heel. 
So, you know, I know a lot of times I say find the four corners of the feet. For a pose like this, stack your bones, bring it back, and then leave the leg floating if you can. Stabilize there, flex the foot, hugging that right leg up into your right hip, skim the floor, shift. Warrior three. Good. You can stretch your arms back alongside your hips. And now be that little like minuet. Or remember when we put the blocks across your upper back or across the upper arms and you were pushing your shoulders. Lift that up. Open heart. And step that back to center. Good. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands flow down in front of the heart. Pause. Hands at your hips, shift the weight into your left leg or into your right leg, left leg lifts. Grab your big toe, yogic toe lock, extend. Keep the left sitting bone anchored. Start to explore a little more lift, more hamstring. And without locking your right knee, so can you push that right leg a little bit straighter? Keep that leg nice and high. Challenge yourself there. The foot is flexed so that as you hug that left, kind of vacuuming the left femur bone up, you can transition. Hug the inner thighs, lift the heel, warrior three. So do all of that. Hug inner thighs, lift left heel, left fingertips down towards the floor. Use a block if you need to. Revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Yep, so left fingertips are down. Rotate through the belly, rotate through the ribs, shoulders, arms. Some of you can look up. Good, three. So whenever you question yourself like, oh, I'm not strong enough, I can't hold. Well, with someone who was strong enough, they would go all the way through the end. They would keep their breath, look forward and down and heart wheel yourself up. Just standing nicely, them good, exactly. Inhale, exhale, hands at the hips, shift the weight. Right knee draws in towards your chest. Grab your right big toe, yogic toe lock. Okay, so also lately in the past two weeks, right? Like not doing a ton of down dogs, sometimes getting away from that, just using the top of our mat to set our sequence. Become aware of the posterior chain. And then can you keep your right sitting bone down? but start to lift that left uh, right leg higher. Good. Release the toe. Try not to let the leg drop. I want a little bit of a hip flexor strength there. Looks great, you guys. Inner spiral through the legs. Warrior three. Right, so all last week, that warrior three was about not letting the pelvis collapse on the head of that left femur bone. You're lifting up. Right, so that you're not hanging here. And then right fingertips down to the mat. Left arm up, revolved, Ardha Chandrasana. I always think I try to picture my inseam, like my inner right thigh reaching through my inner right knee to the inner right heel, trying to straighten that right leg. Good, and then some of you guys have done this before, like when we put a thumb in the left hip. So feel like your left hip crease is drawing back, like your left side body is really long. Look down, push the floor and swing, right leg forward, right arm up and around. Tadasana, cartwheeling to stand. Inhale, arms reach. Look up, stretch up. Exhale, hand to the heart. Hands to hips, shift the weight, left knee in towards your chest. How's your attention to your midline here? Grab your left big toe, yogic toe lock. Okay, now this time as you lift that leg, if you'd like to fold in, thinking chin to shin, Uttita Hasta Panangusasana C variation, little more core, obviously more stability. Okay, so you may not have it, but you could fake it till you make it as much as you could. And then inhale, look forward. Like it, you guys, pulling on the toe, hover the leg. Warrior three, transition smoothly. Move the hips to move the spine and the leg. 
arms reach back, chest is open, turn on the triceps, left fingertips to the mat, please, right arm up, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. If you guys have been practicing with me, when was the last time we did this pose, right? I kind of forgot about it, but it's a great one as you push the floor and reach up, spin through the upper back. That's why we did those thread needles at the beginning of class to loosen that up. Look down, step your left foot deeply to the back of your mat. Left elbow outside edge of right knee. Join your hands in prayer and twist. One. Inhale, exhale for two. Think long, crisp lines as you pull the spine long on your inhale breath. Look down, skandasana, back of your mat over your left leg. Good. Push the heels. Inhale. Exhale, look at the top of your mat. Transition forward, low lunge. Back foot steps to meet front foot. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Soft through the toes. Shake the head. Okay, now we've been doing this one as well. Okay, so let your arms kind of wet noodle down by the side, bringing the backs of your hands onto the mat. So when I bring the backs of my hands with my palms turned up, it's very hard to create any muscular tension that kind of lets everything go. Wet noodle, rag doll here, and then starting from your tailbone, you guys, please roll up through the spine. Be specific. Shoulder blade should flatten down the back body, chin lifts. Shift the weight, hands at your hips, right knee in towards your chest. Grab your big toe, extend. Okay, you can work here. You can work the lift, or if you'd like to fold in, chin to shin. And then it's a little bit wobbly there, right? As you find the inseam of your leg. Three, belly button back and in. Two, you're even using that right hand, you guys, to help pick up the foot a little bit higher. And then strong through your left leg. Inhale, stand tall. Good, lift the chest. Release the leg, don't let it hang. Try to float it as you swing. Move from the hips, long straight spine, warrior three. Arms go back alongside your hips, catch your breath. Inhale. Exhale, right fingertips down. Left arm up, please roll through the ribs, roll through the shoulders, open here. Okay, so every time we, we stay a little bit less long, right? A little bit less long, maybe encouraging you then to kind of pour everything that you've got into it. Look down, step your right foot to the back of your mat, twisted lunge, and then right elbow outside edge of left knee, join your hands in prayer twist. One, there you go, Blair, yep. Inhale, exhale, two. Breathe in, breathe out. Focus on your back right leg. Cartwheel your arms as you push and turn. Skun dasana to the back of your mat. Okay, so we did some malasanas, you guys. Those were to get your inner thighs open. Inhale, squeeze the glutes, spread the inner knees, look forward. Push, low lunge, back foot steps forward. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Okay, so that's basically, right? That's the core of your flow. We're gonna start to kind of move one breath, one movement, and we're gonna add on a couple more poses and then we'll do it one more time at your own pace, okay? So you're kind of trying to memorize. This is like a full vinyasa flow. Heavy head, heavy arms, roll up through your spine. Hands at your hips, shift the weight. Left knee in towards your chest, please. Grab the big toe. Yogic toe lock. Kind of one breath, one movement. 
you'd like to explore, bowing down and in. And then lift back up to center. Can we float the leg? At least to like that 90 degree angle, chest up, use your back muscles, hinge. Warrior three, right? So like a, like a calm person, like you wouldn't feel like kind of anxious to get into the next pose. You would just really take your time floating up, think minuet kind of holding you from sinking down. Left fingertips to the mat, right arm up, twist through the belly. Squeeze through your core, feed that into your shoulders. And then look down as you step that left foot back, left elbow outside edge of right knee. Get a nice big juicy twist there. Inhale, press the palms. Exhale, rotate through the ribs. Cartwheel open, push to the back leg. Skandasana. There you go, Denise. Nice. Okay. Here's our new move from Skandasana. Turn to the back of your mat. Low lunge. So your left foot is up in between your hands. Drag your left foot back halfway. Pivot turn to the pinky edge side of your right foot. Left toes turn open for a supported version of Vatsi Sasana. Drop your right hip down towards the mat. Extend the left arm. Nice, Maria. Good. And then push into the foot, push into the hand, and arch up. Inhale, stretch side body. Exhale, tap down. One more time. Inhale, push up. Exhale, tap down, look at the front of your mat, rotate and cross. Left knee over the top of your right. Arda Gomukhasana, fold in here. Yep, yeah, so that left leg, yeah, exactly, just an Arda Gomukhasana as you fold. So Kinam Jen, yeah, what that looks like is kind of tucking that left foot to the outside edge of the right hip and folding in. This one, do you guys know? So just this simple kind of different arrangement of the legs does give you a different stretch to the kind of outer knee. A lot of people feel this in their IT band. And then inhale, look up. Unwind your legs. You're facing the top of your mat. Take your hands back behind you, fingertips turn forward. So this is like one of the best poses that I know for strengthening the entire posterior chain. Pars Vo Tanasana, lift your chest. Push the roots of your big toe mounds down into the mat and lift up. You can think of it like a reverse plank pose, but you should feel your calf muscles, your hamstrings, your butt muscles. The rhomboids, the muscles in between the shoulder blades, pushing you up, inhale. And exhale, lower all the way down. Good. Bend your knees, rock back, rock forward, bakasana. Rock back, rock forward, knees into armpits, bakasana. Five, four, three, two, one, feet down in between your hands. You should be at the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen, like I'm halfway to the top of my mat, maybe another step forward and exhale, fold in. That's your flow, you guys. Let's practice, let's get it on the left side. Bend knees, hang head, hang arms, roll up through your spine. Inhale. Exhale, hands to hips, shift. Right knee drives up. Grab the right big toe. Yogic toe lock, we're not here for long. Inhale, some of you, if you wanna do that, bowing in. Try to let the torso move to the leg. Back up through center. Pause. Good, swing it back. Warrior three. So since we've been doing that, like all movement starts from the pelvis type class, really makes sense, right? You feel your pelvis rotate and how the leg extends back out of the hips and the spine pulls forward. Right fingertips to the mat. Revolved, Ardha Chandrasana. Nice, good. Yep, push the floor, lift up. 
So sink into the pose, right? Lifting up, lifting up. I'm always lifting that right heel. Look down. Stretch your right foot back. Right elbow outside edge of left knee. Deepen the twist into the upper back. Loosen that up. So we strengthen the upper back, but then we also widen it. Inhale. Exhale, push into the legs. Lift up and over. Skandasana. Back of your mat. Rotate, turn, low lunge over your right leg, back of your mat. Slide your right foot back halfway, nice and smooth. Pivot, turn to the pinky edge side of your left foot. Right arm lifts up into a supported, squeeze your inner thighs. Drop the hips, extend the arm towards the top of the mat. Should feel a little stretch to the side body here into the outer hips and then push the floor. Squeeze the inner thighs up and over, kind of rainbow up. And tap down one. Inhale up. Tap down. And when you tap down, you keep looking at the top of your mat. Let that top knee drop. Good. And then you fold. Ardha Gomukhasana. To get a little bit quieter here. Right, what other avenues of your life would it kind of help out if you just right were inspired, right? Kind of copied someone who's already gone the direction, who already has a clear path of one that you'd like to follow, and then just kind of like repeat their habits, their mindset, their actions until they kind of start to become yours. Inhale, lengthen half flat back. And then release, unscissor the legs, right? We're at the top of our mat, legs are together. Hands come back behind you, squeeze the shoulder blades, puff the heart, and per, a pars vo tanasana. Used to be one of my least favorite poses. Now I actually kind of enjoy feeling that strength on the back body so the front body can open and try not to sink. Imagine like a minuet here. Lifting the thighs, lifting the hips, lifting the center of the chest. Excellent. Hips drop down. Bend your knees. Rock back. Rock forward. Bakasana. So you use momentum. Go up and over. Split the knees. Bakasana. Three. Two. One. Feet down. Top of your mat. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Ragdoll your arms. Close your eyes. Roll up through your spine. Okay. We're going to do one variation at the top. And then we flow through basically one breath, one movement, hopefully with as little of my talking as possible. Hands at your hips, left knee in towards your chest. And so it's the other thing too, you guys, when we keep using the same muscle groups, right? There's some endurance there. Now, we've done this one before. Maybe it's been a long time. When you scoop over, think Bakasana, like through the spine, and you interlace your fingers underneath your left heel. And then you actually push down until you feel a stretch in the back of that left hip, maybe like the left quadratus lumborum. So my left knee is almost in line with my left hip. And then some of you might want to try to straighten the leg here. And it's like you're unfolding, bringing the chin towards the shin bone. And then inhale, lengthen half flat back. Hands to hips as you lift your chest. Find your flow, warrior three. Inhale, calm yet confident, left fingertips down, hug the midline, use the power of your legs to twist open your spine. Look down, shift back, balance, left elbow outside edge of right knee. Fill the breath into the entire pose. Push into the legs. Skandasana, back of your mat. Push, 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 push. Get the inner thigh nice. 
drop the weight back into the heels, inhale. Exhale, turn, no hands, back of your mat. Then you plant your hands, slide your left foot back halfway, pivot, turn, supported, side angle. Drop the hips. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, tap down, smooth flow here, you guys. One more, inhale up. Exhale, tap the hip, turn, twist. You should be facing the top of your mat. Arda, go Mukhasana. Yeah, nice transitions there, you guys. Nice and smooth. So we get the hang of it, right? So you just keep repeating until it becomes something that you kind of own. Inhale. Exhale, lift the gaze, look forward. Release, uncross the legs. This is really like the theme of class to get the back body super strong. Push the roots of the big toe mounds into the mat. Good, a little more butt muscles, big breath across the collarbones and release your hips down. Bend knees, get your little rock, make it to the top of your mat. Bakasana. Bakasana, step it down. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, deep stretch, back of the legs, Uttanasana. Okay, final time, drop the head, close the eyes. So can you kind of imagine like a class, like we haven't done a down dog in almost 30 minutes, right? So can you kind of do everything from the top of your mat? Roll up, please. Stack, 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 step, loop the shoulder blades down. Stand there, calm confident, embodying those characteristics. Weight shifts into your left foot, drive right knee up, please interlace the fingers underneath the core of your right heel and press down. Okay, as you press down, keep your left leg strong and then try to extend your right leg. Nice place to try chin to shin. That's how they do it in Bikram. And then inhale, lengthen half flat back. Use your hips lifting up to neutral to lift the spine. Warrior three. Lots of legs, lots of legs. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, right fingertips to the mat. Revolved, Ardha Chandrasana. I do like a series where we kind of repeat things because maybe it feels a little different in the body. Look down, right foot stretches to the back of your mat, right elbow outside edge of left knee. Revolved, side angle, inhale. Exhale, look down, push up and over, pop into your skandhasana. No hands as you turn, then low lunge. Right foot drags halfway back, pivot, supported side angle. Yeah, squeeze inner thighs, try not to let that left hip drop. And then you drop it intentionally, right? Yeah, and then you actually squeeze that muscle, squeeze the inner thighs to lift up and over. One, drop it down. Inhale, push the floor, find the knife edge side, lengthen through the side body. That's what we need to get, get you guys a little more spinal extension and then rotate to seated. Notice for a lot of you, that started to become much smoother than at the very beginning and fold in. Top knee presses down onto the bottom leg. Open. And exhale, release. These are the legs. I like to think my big toes pressing, my inner knees, my inner thighs are spiraling down. That's that internal rotation. Hands come back, pulling the hands forward towards the top of your mat to lift your chest. Parsvottanasana. From that strength, remember we use the blocks, push the shoulders down as you lift the chest and release. Bend your knees. 
finish with that intention, rock back, rock forward, calm, confident, right? So how would someone who's calm and confident, even if they can't do Bokasana, how would they approach it? Not rushing, kind of trusting that they could get it. And then when you're ready, if you'd like to jump or step to Chaturanga, inhale up dog and explore one final downward facing dog, hips up and back. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Knees down. Cross your ankle. Lie all the way back. Final pose is going to be fish pose. Okay, so fish pose. Legs extend straight like your Parsvo Tanasana. Inner thighs spiraling down. Lie down like we started class. Bending your elbows. Yeah, and I'll just let everyone, we got, a, we got a little bit of time. This is our last pose. I'll just let everyone settle this in and kind of feel what we've been doing, right? Pushing the elbows down, pushing the shoulders down, how that pops the chest up. And then as you push down into your elbows, lift the chest, lift the head, drop the head back, coming onto the top of your head. Fish pose. Nice. Now remember, the more you walk your elbows towards your hips, the deeper the pose is gonna become, right? And the more you walk your elbows in towards one another, towards your spine, the more your back muscles will contract and your chest will open. If anybody wants to lift their legs up away from the floor at a 45 degree angle, good job, Denise. And then if anybody wants to extend their arms at a 45, good, Maria, yes, 45. Plant the palms together, yes. Inhale, exhale, release, chin to chest. Nice job, often, at least in my classes, overlooked pose, but a very good one for strengthening the back and a nice back bend without being too extreme. Knees pull into the chest, please. And if before you hit Shavasana, if a, if a happy baby pose, it would feel good after after that. Closing eyes. Press the tailbone down. And then with your eyes closed, like someone just looking at your face, you would seem calm, you would feel kind of confident, like sure of yourself aware of what you're doing. Inhale, exhale, good. And then please release. And you guys have double blocks around. If you'd like to slide those double blocks underneath the center of your thighs for some support today. Arms out to the side, there you go, Blair. Yeah, those, those bolsters are even better, nice. And arms out to the side.
before you move. Think of that quality. So I'm going to stick with confidence because I can't. Right? And so maybe a confident person would send that email because they wouldn't question themselves, right? Or they pick up the phone and they would make that call. So what is one thing that coming out of this practice, you could be inspired, right? Maybe a calm person would then go sit and have a meditation for 10 minutes after this or something. So what could you actually do to then start to act in that direction? And then you wiggle your fingers and you wiggle your toes, please. Stretch the arms up overhead. Nice big pulling action there. Pull through the legs, pull through the arms, and then bend your knees. Roll to your right. And press up to find seated. in front of your heart center. Okay, bring the awareness back of the head, back of the shoulders. See if that kind of helps you, the posterior strength, you know, chain strength to sit tall. And then taking your thumbs to your third eye, bowing forward to seal your practice. Bye. Shiva Atma.